You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest reality TV tea spilled fresh weekly. For more hot takes, go and give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. I always keep it funny and I always keep it cute on the Instagram. And if you're like me and you want to stay up to date with the latest reality tea, you can always follow us at No Filter with Zach for the latest show news or just join our private Facebook group. It's like our dirty little secret where we have all our, our housewives theories and uh, and swapping just like a fun gossip. So click the link below. Get ready. We are going. Things are going to be pretty big this episode because everything's bigger in Dallas, right? Today's guest loves pink probably more than Lisa Vanderpump. She'll pass on the chicken feet, but she's probably got a purse full of dog treats. You may recognize her from The Real Housewives of Dallas. Please welcome the host of the new podcast, Cam and Carrie Do Dallas, Cameron Westcott. Thank you. Thank you, Zach, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you on. I've been watching the latest season of Dallas. I was binging last season. Um, I watched all the reunions that I made sure I was fully caught up. And oof, this season looks like it's going to be wild. Oh, yes. We were definitely ready to come out of quarantine and have fun together and see each other. After being stuck, you know, on lockdown, we were ready to have some fun. That's where I'm at. I'm still locked down in LA and I'm ready to have some fun, some safe fun very soon. Yes, say fun. <laughs> so, okay, so before we dive deep into it, I have to have you answer my icebreaker questions, which every guest has to answer when they come on. Are I'll you sprinkle. ready? I'm so excited, yes. First one is, where did you grow up and what part of the world are you currently living in right now? I grew up in Montecito, California, a small beach town, you know, off of the coast of California. And yes. it's gorgeous. They call it the American Riviera. So it's pretty. Like- and it was small when I grew up there, really little, and everyone knew everyone. Now it's a lot, you know, larger, and there's a lot more people. And I'm currently in Dallas, Texas right now. Love it. What's one word your mom would use to describe you? Over the top. I can see that. Uh, fun fact, what's one thing we would not expect from what we see on the show about Miss Cam? say people don't always see my sweet side like I sometimes can come off extremely blonde and funny but I don't really think they see my sweet side as much so I definitely would say I have a sweet side and my girlfriends you know that are not on the show would all actually probably use that word for me listen blondes have more fun yes they have they're they're a little sour but we're definitely sweet on the inside we're like a sour patch kid I agree hundred percent. Yes. What is your drink of choice? Ooh, are we talking cocktail drink mm-hmm. of choice? Okay. A leche martini. <gasps> Ooh, they're so good. But they're rare to find. I, I when I find a leche martini, I'm like, Ooh, I yes, get excited. They're very rare to find. Okay. Last icebreaker question, which is my favorite to ask. And that's if you have to be, if you can be reincarnated, As a Kardashian, which one would it be? I would come back as Kim. Kim, why Kim? Yeah. I think I think she's kind of more the prima donna of the sisters. And I kind of find myself more as the prima donna. My sister's more low-key, and Kim's kind of the more over-the-top one. And my sister always thinks I'm over to the top. So I feel like the dynamic would work in the family. Yes. I love Kim. She's my favorite right now. Yeah, me too. So you recently launched Sparkle Dog, which we saw as pink dog food, but I I hear that it has recently expanded its line. How is Sparkle Dog doing? Is is Fancy a fan? Well, Sparkle Dog's doing great. You know, it is an essential food item. Mm. So thank goodness Amazon is still shipping. I'm very excited. (laughs) that at first it was shut down for a while uh, for about a week it was only a week they said it wasn't essential and then after that they said yes all dogs eat treats so we're like yes um but yeah it's going great i sell everything on amazon prime so everything goes directly to your door and i do little treats i do tiny little ones and big ones and everything is all organic and very wholesome and the dogs love it i have 
little heart shaped chewy multivitamins and they get one multivitamin a day and they think it's a treat. So they get really excited and they're soft and chewy. So that's really great for small dogs teeth. And then I also have bully sticks, which I, you know, call the iPad for dogs. Yes. It keeps them busy for like an hour. Like literally it keeps them busy and it's like giving them an activity and they just take it and they just do their activity. And it also helps with mental stimulation as well. So they get over, you know, overly tired from it because you're mentally stimulating them. And then we also have a sparkle dog shampoo, which is for sensitive skin and it's oatmeal based Ooh. and it's spelled vacation, it's vacation oh. in a bottle. Are any of these new products pink as well? You know, they actually are not pink inside or anything like that. I want them to be pink, but I worked endless hours and endless hours and it just was not possible. I couldn't do it for these particular products, but I tried. Where did this deep love for pink come from? Do you think like you're in competition with Lisa Vanderpump with who's the pink queen? Well, you know, I think Lisa's always going to be a queen and she is the pink queen. I would say maybe I'm a pink princess, even though I'm married, but I'm the pink princess. She could be the pink queen. I will never take Lisa's title because I love Lisa. So, but I don't feel like we're similar. Like we're very different. So I feel like it's still, you know, I always still stay in my lane. How is Fancy doing post-training? And can I get this trainer's number? Cause he's so hot. Okay. All my girlfriends are texting me that night saying, I need to buy a dog just so I can go see your dog trainer. And it's so funny. I was dying laughing. And um, he's the sweetest guy. And he's really, really great also for training ourselves. Oh, okay. I need him to train me. I don't have a dog, but he can train me every Friday night. Yes. He's really good also about, you know, feeling people out because he's really good with energy mm. and he can feel animals energy and he could feel, you know, human energy. And I told him he needs to come with me to help train, you know, some of the ladies on my cast. I really think that he needs to come and join the group of housewives sometime, you know, and just, you know, see their energy and train them a little bit too. We all need some training. I agree. Is fancy keeping up with the training? Yes. She's doing really good. The one thing that's a little hard for me, sometimes my days get really crazy busy and I let her down. And if she doesn't have her workout, yeah, sometimes she makes mistakes. But, you know, as Brad says, you can't expect her to behave a certain way if you also don't fulfill her needs either. So it's really, you know, my fault when she does act up. But if I follow the whole schedule, she is an angel. I feel like we all need a schedule. Like that's one thing we learned in 2020 was we need schedules and structure to stay safe. Yes, completely. So the new season, season five of Real Housewives of Dallas just kicked off, which was so good. The premiere was good. The second episode that we got this week was so good. But we did see, so Brandy was kind of at the center of a lot of the drama from her video where, you know, she was imitating people that are Asian with her eyes. What did you, what was your initial reaction when you first saw the video and everybody was starting to tweet about it? Yeah. When I first saw the video, um, I actually... I actually was actually notified by some of my friends actually that were affected by the video. So I didn't even see it at first. And I literally opened my phone and was like, what is going on here? And, you know, it, it did, um, it wasn't poor taste, you know, and it did rub people the wrong way. And um, she definitely has been learning and growing and I don't approve of the video whatsoever. And she knows that it was in poor taste and she's learning and growing and, you know, everyone's learning and growing by her mistake as well. So I think it's amazing that she has put herself out there to really make this a teachable moment so that everybody is learning from her mistake. I agree. I have to say when I was watching the second episode this week and I saw the very raw conversation she was having with newbie Tiffany Moon, I feel like I just like I could feel each of their emotions. And I feel like that's one thing that I really loved that we got to see this season is that we're having these conversations. We're not running away away from it. We're not shying away from it. We're not afraid of having conversations with people that had different upbringings or perspectives or backgrounds. And like, I feel like that's so important. Did you initially reach out to Brandy when everything kind of started to get heated online? 
You know, I actually did it because it was right after the reunion and we actually were not talking. And my really good friend was so affected by it. And she just was like, you know, going crazy. And she actually grew up in Beijing. So she was very affected by it. And I really was, I, I really should have been reaching out to her, but I had such a bad taste in my mouth from reunion about what happened with Leanne at the time. Time yeah. that I was just like, oh, I am staying out of this one. So it was hard. But then after, you know, things settled, we connected and she explained, you know, how she's learning and growing. And and I love to give people a second chance. Everyone makes mistakes and we're all learning from each other. So were you even considering maybe not coming back for season five? Because I feel like the last season four reunion was really heated and your relationships with some of the girls were a little fractured. What were you thinking and what ultimately made you decide to sign on for another season? Yeah, actually two weeks after reunion, if you asked me, I would have been like, oh, I am done. I'm done. I cannot stand these women. Because for me, it just, it just was shocking that some of the things that were coming up in obviously I'm not going to go into detail, but it just, it hurt me because, you know, I truly, truly had a really amazing relationship with Leanne and I, I know she made mistakes and I know everyone makes mistakes, but it hurt me that she was getting, you know, picked on so much. And I'm not saying her actions were okay, whatever. I just don't like to see anyone being, you know, in that situation. And it was hard because I really, you know, I was just sad. What is your relationship like with Leanne now? Yeah, we're in a great place. Really, really great place. And, you know, after the reunion, you know, she was, you know, upset with me at the same time, though, like, I'm always going to be honest and open to her about my opinion. And I, I didn't agree with what happened last year with her. Absolutely not. And she knows that. And she fully accepted that and, and learned from it. And we're in an amazing place because we are true girlfriends. And I will share those memories with her. So it's exciting that we're still friends. And I think that's a good friend that's willing to call you out when they know you're not being the the you that they know you are on the inside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So talk to me about Tiffany Moon, though. So she's the newbie, and we saw a lot of her in the trailer. So I'm assuming she's a big part of a lot of the storylines and drama that we'll see unfold this season. Had you known her prior to the show? No, I actually didn't know her. Um, The only time I actually had met her, actually, she ran up to me at Starbucks one time and asked for a selfie. And I didn't know who she was. And I was like, oh, my God, she's so sweet. I love her. Like, she was just, like, really energetic and excited. And um, so I was like, oh, this girl's so cute. And I loved her. And then I later heard that she was trying out for the show. And so, um, and I actually, I do know some people that know, like, other, you know, people in her family through the grapevine. But other than that, no. Mm -mm. What was your initial impression of her when you first met her? Um, When I first met her, I, you know, thought she was like a baby genius. I was like, oh, this girl is super intelligent. She's quick, you know, funny. And, you know, I was all in. I automatically thought we're going to be besties. I, you know, I love strong women as well. I naturally gravitate to that. And I just found myself, you know, attracted to it. And then we get to the dim sum and she was a little bossy. How, like, did you, were you taken back by it? Were you kind of upset? And like, how does that affect your relationship with her moving forward? Yeah, I was actually taken back by it because, you know, she, you know, she knew that I had always had her back and knew that I took her under my wing and really wanted to guide her to be a housewife. And, you know, our husbands went out to dinner together. And I thought, you know, she, she asked if we could be the peak posse. I mean, I like was like, oh yeah, this girl, we're, we're going to be like this. And then I was just like, wait a minute, if we're going to be the peak posse, the peak posse doesn't go after other people like that. And so I was kind of like, this is not the big posse. Okay. I was like taken back. And then I started kind of stepping back a little because I was like, Ooh, she's being a little much over chicken feet. It's a little much. So I was kind of taking back. I was stepping back at that point. I was like, there's something going on here. Yeah. Uh, What can you tease about what's to come later this season? Is there going to be a little tiff between you and Tiffany? Now that we kind of see that there's a little tiff now, is that going to grow at all? 
here and there. I mean, she does um, like to talk down to me. You know, she is a know-it-all sometimes. So she does talk down to me, but you know, she wasn't very, it's funny. She really wasn't very vocal a lot when we all were hanging out. She's actually really quiet. So it's funny when I'm seeing everything because I'm like, I didn't know you had that much to say. What about you and your response? Because you, this is your fifth season now. And I feel like we've gotten little bits of, I mean, I think you've even referred to yourself as a little nerdy or you were very book smart and you loved going to school, but we don't get to see that side of you. Do you feel like the perception on the show is accurate or what do you wish we would see more of in your life? Well, a little bit about myself. Like I crack jokes just to make myself laugh. Okay. Like for instance, like, I literally will pull up the weather channel and say a tornado was two weeks ago. I'll pull it up and be like, Hey, there's a tornado coming. And I literally will set myself up just to get court's reaction. Cause it's so funny. And then I laugh at myself and he doesn't know I'm joking all the time. Sometimes he like, I think I'm serious. So we have this like dynamic that I love to play with. Um, but the other thing is, is I just want to have fun and laugh at myself. And sometimes things come out and I could sound like an airhead, but I really don't care because you know, I think some of this stuff is funny anyway. How have fans like over the past few seasons, like, do you feel like they you've grown more of your own like pink posse online? Yes. Oh, girls will send me their pink outfits and tag me and ask me for fashion advice. Or if they see something out shopping, fans will tag me, be like, you need this camp. And or, or brands will send me the pink thing from their line. I mean, it is like my dream. It is literally my dream. I love it. I'm telling you, you need to you need to come for that LVP crown. Or maybe you guys can share. You'll have the Dallas crown and she can have the, the Beverly yes. Hills crown. Yes, for sure. So you recently opened up about having achalasia. Do yeah. you can you explain to everyone listening or watching right now what achalasia is and how it's impacted your life? Yeah, so achalasia is a very, very rare, rare disease of the esophagus. It's a one in 250,000 people, and they don't know how you get it. They really haven't figured out at all how people get it, actually. And uh, there's actually never been anything to cure it since the last seven seven years. And they used to do this other process where they would literally have to bring a robot in and it cuts your whole stomach up. And it has to be such a precise, you know, cut that the robot had to do it because it had to be a precise cut on your esophagus. But basically the bottom of your esophagus gets pinched. So when you swallow, nothing goes down. Okay. So you literally start having you know, issues because it gets tighter and tighter. And I've had probably around five, you know, little, little, um, surgeries to open up my esophagus. But then after you do that simple procedure, you can't do it anymore. And you have to do like a more invasive one. And there's actually a doctor that actually, um, Dr. Sure Strapalapolis, I can't say his last name for the life of me. Um, he's in New York and he actually, um, is specialized in the esophagus mm. and he ended up getting trained to Japan and Japan has like a guy who invented the poem treatment and they basically use a laser to open up your esophagus on the bottom so that your whole stomach doesn't have to be cut open because, you know, recovery with your stomach being cut open takes takes forever weeks and weeks and weeks yeah. and this literally they do a laser the only thing is i i couldn't eat anything for like three weeks oh no and it was so hard and i had my surgery literally the day after reunion last year ah uh. it was like but i was happy because i was like put me to sleep i was <laughs> like i couldn't handle the drama after reunion so i was like thank you lights out <laughs> <laughs> and I just, you know, had recovery after that. And, but it's great. And I can swallow really well again. And my life is, you know, back to normal again, but it was really hard because I'd be at a restaurant and I would have food literally stuck in my throat and people think I'm choking. And I'm like, I'm not choking. It's just, my food doesn't go down. And it's, it, it was very uncomfortable. Oof, yeah. I couldn't even and imagine. It, and it was hard too, because I couldn't eat. Um, no, it was hard too, because I couldn't drink a lot of alcohol because of the acid reflex that alcohol would create from being stuck in your esophagus. 
And it gave me horrible pain all the time from alcohol being stuck in my esophagus. And so I really wasn't ever a big drinker. And so now I'm like, this season, I actually could have like three margaritas and have fun and not worry. So it was nice. And are you having three margaritas? Oh, yes. I definitely (laughs) did this summer when we were filming. I love it. And it looks like you and Carrie have gotten a lot closer and you guys now have a new podcast that's launching. Yes, Yes, I know. So um, her and I just talk and talk and talk. We never stop talking. And so it's, it's really fun because, you know, we're both so different at the same time. And I love that because I can bounce things off of her. And she is okay with me having a different opinion. And I'm okay with her having a different opinion because we've just accepted we're complete opposites and that works. And that's, you know, and, and we just also love to have fun together. She brings the fun out of me. Is it weird being friends with Carrie and Leanne, or do you feel like everybody's kind of mended at this point? You know, last year it wasn't weird it wasn't, it it, it got a little weird after Thailand with their relationship. And then at reunion, it got a little weird because I always felt like I was in the middle. Yeah. But then after all that, Karen and I talked about it and we moved on and now everything's great. So what can we expect from the new podcast? Like what topics are you tackling? Are we going to see any housewives join in? Yes. We are hoping to bring on some housewife guests. We're very excited. We're going to, you know, interview some of our favorite housewives. We haven't picked which one's going first or what we're doing yet. It's really exciting. Um, But overall, you're going to get to know the real us, things that we don't get to show you guys on the show. You know, you guys only get to see a glimpse of our life. So we really want to talk about what's going on in our everyday lives so people really get to know the real us when we're not filming. So I'm really excited about that. And you also just will, you'll, you'll get to hear a little bit more about our personal life as well. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's one thing we don't always get is like the in-depth. So I'm excited to listen to the podcast. Who's at the top of like your dream guest list? Is Tiffany Moon number one on the list? Oh my goodness. Um, Well, I definitely would not say so because um, um, I think we'll probably wait. Uh, We're going to definitely do someone that's on a different cast probably first. And I do hope that I get to bring other cast members on though, of course. Um, But I, you know, it's funny. Um, I think we really are interested in asking Bronwyn to go first, Uh. but we have, We haven't really confirmed it yet with her, so. She's definitely had an interesting journey from 2020 into 2021 that I would love to to pick her brain myself. Yes, us too. So I have some listener questions that I had sent in for you. Are you ready? Yes. So first up, JK Orlando asks, why did you originally want to join Real Housewives? Were you familiar with the franchise prior? Oh, I was the biggest fan of the show. I literally had my babies and I'd be rocking them in the rocking chair and I would be breastfeeding as I watched in Housewives. I mean, that's what I was doing while my husband was at the office. Okay. That was my moment of quietness. And when they were napping, I'd be turning on the shows. And that's when I really got into it. Actually, when I was having all these napping hours, when the babies were napping and I just am the biggest fan. So when they called, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm totally going to interview. This is going to be so fun. And then I realized, ooh, this might be a little bit more tricky than I thought to be on the show. It's not as easy as you think. And then I had to convince my husband. And that took, like, two months. And do you? how do you feel like your experience on the show has been for the past few seasons? Are you happy that you joined? Do you have moments where you're like, oh, my God, why did I sign up for this? Yeah, it it definitely, it definitely changed my life. Um, You know, I definitely, you know, realized who my true girlfriends are around this town, who had my back, who supported me. You realize the jealous girls that are around you, that are trying to bring you down, that you thought were your friend who you totally had their full back on, you know, like all the time. So you learn who your true friends are. So that's the good thing about this show. Um, but 
Yeah. I mean, my life definitely changed, but it's also changed for the better too, because I'm able to bring awareness to a lot of organizations that I'm very passionate about. And before I was just donating and volunteering and that's great. And I still do that, but being able to have this platform to bring awareness to charities that I'm dear to just helps them as well. And I also love that I can help my other friends that are female entrepreneurs and help push their brands that I'm passionate about. And it's like, we all help each other. It's like sisterhood, you know, it's like, we're yeah. all helping each other and I love it. It's great. And it gave you an opportunity to launch Sparkle Dog. Yeah. Gave me an opportunity to launch Sparkle Dog and, you know, and also to have a voice, especially in times like this, it's nice to have an outlet, to have a voice and to hear everyone's opinions. And I love that. Uh, Beeple22 asks if you have a dream all-star housewives cast that you would like to join. Gosh, well, I love every city. I'm obsessed with every city. Um, But I am just, I have to be honest, my favorite city is Beverly Hills. I mean, I love the fashion. I'm a fashionista. I love the fashion. And I would want to be surrounded with all those beautiful clothes all day long. I mean, that eye candy, I'm like... I mean, they're like walking Barbie dolls. They're gorgeous. I couldn't, I I literally would just be like the biggest fan sitting there with all them. (laughs) Speaking of Beverly Hills, the real Andy of Beverly Hills asks, do you get annoyed by people saying you look like Nicole Kidman? Which you actually really do. Like I could see you on, what was the show she just did? The Departed, The Undoing. God, it was so good. That was like the best show. Oh, I love that show. You know, I... I'm obsessed with Nicole Kidman. I love her. I think she's gorgeous and beautiful and intelligent, everything about her. And I'm like, oh my God, if people are comparing me to her. I'm like, sign me up. I'll be Nicole Kidman Jr. I mean, miss, miss, like, like little miss Nicole Kidman. I mean, oh my God, she's beautiful. And this is hilarious. So my husband and I, we always like, when we were dating, we always had this joke, oh, who's your freebie? Like as a joke and core, my husband always said, Nicole Kidman. Is that weird? And this is before anyone ever told me I look like Nicole Kidman. And I'm like, now that people are calling me Nicole Kidman, I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, this is awesome. I guess, I guess I'm my husband's freebie. So sounds like he has a type. Yes. <laughs> Kim Carr wants to know if you feel insecure being taller than your hubby, or is it just the heels? No, I don't feel so insecure, actually. Um, you know, definitely I tower him when I wear three inch heels. When I wear two inch heels, I'm usually okay. But when I have to go to three, but I'm like, I usually only wear three when I go out with my girlfriends because I don't like to be too tall. It does get a little awkward sometimes, but I really never let it never really bothers me but when we first start dating I never date a short guy when we first start dating I was like this is so weird I don't know and then I loved him so much I just was like I can't say no just because he's like a few inches shorter I was like I I mean that's just ridiculous so I was like no I'm not gonna let that get in the way and I even called my dad and I said dad what do I do I love this guy like everything about him I said but he's a little shorter I'm like dad what do I do my father was like Cameron that means nothing he goes you continue to date him you love him you you keep moving forward and I was like oh thanks dad I love it. Your relationship is so cute and I love watching it on the show. Oh, thank you. And I love it too, because actually there's women that have contacted me and they're like, my boyfriend's shorter and I'm really, you know, I'm not sure about it. And it's so sweet. They they connect with me and I'm like, oh, I'm like, girl, I promise you like looks eventually fade. And if you don't like their personality, good luck. You'll be miserable in your marriage. I always find it so strange when I have like friends that are like, I'm only going to date a guy who's, you know, six feet or taller. And I'm just like, you're five, two. You don't need to date a guy that's six foot or taller. I know, right? (laughs) And I sadly was that person until I finally was open-minded. And I told my girl, my best friend, she was like that too. And I said, just give this guy one chance. I said, take him on a, like go on a date. He's so sweet to you. And guess what? They married each other. So I'm like, like, you know, how, how tall are you compared to him? I'm about two inches taller. And you're, you're, are you six feet? Six feet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm six feet. 
I love it. Okay, so I want to play a fun little game with you. We're going to do a word association game where I'm going to take some some buzzworthy, some seemingly buzzworthy stills from the trailer, and I want you to describe what's going on, but you can only use one word, okay? Okay, first up, we have this very fun still of you, and it looks like you have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, you have seven dogs. Can you please explain what is happening with you and all of these dogs? Are you holding all of these dogs? I'm literally walking all of them. Actually, I believe there's 10 there. There's just a few behind me you can't see, which is hilarious. And actually, Fancy is in there. She's just in the back. (sighs) And this is the funny thing. She started in the back, but guess what? By the end of the walk, she's leading the pack. Love it. That's my girl. That's my girl. She found her way to get in the front somehow. Um, But um, I would say the word would be celebration. Okay, celebration. Okay, this next one. It looks like you guys are on, it looks like a bus and there's a stripper pole and everybody just looks like we're having a good old time. Stripper. (laughs) Is it, uh uh-oh, is it like an Atlanta stripper gate situation? I'm a little excited to see what this is. Um, Okay, next one. You guys, I mean, it looks like there's maybe a shaman there. Everybody has their hands up. It looks like we're worshiping. I don't know if he's a shaman or maybe he's like going to give everybody some free Botox, but I'm ready to sign up. What is happening, Cam? He's a shaman, Um, but the word is sister. Oh, you'll know why. You'll know why soon. Sister. Sister. Okay. Okay. This next one. What is happening? You have like a face mask on with some sunglasses and you're lounging out maybe by a pool. Yeah. Um, and this is hilarious because my um, confessional, my first confessional look never got released the first round and somehow everyone's confessional look was out. And then they placed this photo next to everyone's glamorous confessionals, which is hilarious. Um, but I would say this word would be drama. Drama. I mean, it looks like there's about to be some drama in Dallas. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. This next one is you and Tiffany Moon. And you seem to be, is that her Birkin that you're holding up in her her fingerprint yes. sealed closet? Yes. Uh, show and tell. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, last one. Now, this one looks like the most heated of them all. It looks like we're at a party of jewels dripping down your forehead, looking very regal. What is happening here, Cam? Unfair. Unfair. Ooh, that sounds like somebody's putting you in the hot seat. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing everything that unfolds this season on Real Housewives of Dallas. Please let everybody know where they can get your dog food, where they can listen to your podcast, and where they can keep up with you on the social meds. Pimp yourself out, Cam. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, you can actually follow me on Instagram for Kim and Carrie Do Dallas for our podcast, Cameron Westcott for my personal, and Sparkle Dog Food for my dog food. And on Twitter, we're actually all on Twitter as well, Cam Westcott on Twitter, and Sparkle Dog Food on Twitter. And uh, let's see what else. And Facebook. Uh, yeah, Facebook's all the same. So, Are there any new projects that you have in the works? So you just, you have the dog food and the podcast and you're full at the moment. Yeah, I'm full at the moment. I've just been, you know, trying to, you know, stay healthy over here. But yeah, just focusing on sparkle dog food and trying to be a great mom, you know, while I'm not filming. I know when filming, you know, happens, I'm very busy. So just try to be the best mom right now. I love that. It, it is a big year for all of us. And I think we're all learning and, and growing for sure. Yes. We're ready to yes. take on 2021. Thank you, Cam. Thank you guys for listening to Hashtag No Fields with Zach Peter. Don't forget to follow me at Just Plain Zach. I think I need to try some sparkle dog treats now. Oh, are they okay. edible? Are they human edible? I feel like they yes. just look so pretty. Oh, they are human edible. You, everything in them you can eat, literally. It's like there's nothing in them that you would not like. It's literally oats. It's literally oats, peanut butter, molasses, a little bit of cinnamon, and, and, and uh, that's it, really. I mean, I'm gonna have to go on Amazon and place an order for me. There's well, no sugar in it, but you know, <laughs> if you're on a sugar diet, you can eat these as snacks. I love it. And, and I'm gonna have to tune in to Cam and Carrie do Dallas. That sounds like it's gonna be a good time. And I can't wait to see what you guys have in store for all of us. 
man. I mean, and the drama that's going to be unfolding on Real Housewives of Dallas. My TV, my DVR is set and I am ready to watch it all unfold. So thank you, okay. Cam. Thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to Hashtag No Fields with Zach Peter on all podcast platforms, iTunes, Spotify, or everywhere. And on YouTube. So if you want to watch the show and continue watching the show, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our private Facebook group. The link is in the description below. And I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.